EAE 3600. How's it going today? Everybody doing okay? Hopefully you're having a lovely Wednesday so far. I know mine's been okay. I'm a little tired. That's all right. I'm always tired. I got two kids, so that's just how my life goes, to be honest with you. Hola. Alias with the hoi. <laughs> it is very hot. Ah, it's not. I don't know. How hot is it here right now? Can't be that bad, is it? Ooh, 85. Yeah, it's a little toasty. It's getting toasty. Slow day. Hey, on slow days. You know what? Sometimes it's nice to have a slow day. Play some video games, do something. I had to go to work this morning, but nothing too crazy. like a bunch of you have hopped in so far to the stream um i'm gonna call an audible today and hopefully y'all are okay with that we with the last two streams have gotten just a little bit of head of my normally planned schedule so instead of continuing with the hand model and the rest of the body today we are going to take an audible and i'm going to throw a little extra assignment at you guys um, we'll make it worth some points, uh, but just to, uh, model, you know, some sort of object, I don't know, I haven't quite decided yet what we're going to do yet. Maybe I'll throw it out to you guys. Um, but we're going to model some sort of object for the class today. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a break from modeling a human. And when you're doing your characters, if you wanted to do some accessories, you'll have a little bit of an experience modeling something outside of that too, right? Um, an audible. Uh, that is a sports reference. An audible is like, uh, I'm calling a change. We can... Let's see. Audible is also a book company, but... Um, in American football, which we play here in the United States, which should be more like egg toss is what it should be called. Cause that's what you're throwing. It looks like an egg, right? You don't even really use your feet unless you're running. But anyways, it means the quarterback calls a change of plays, right? Change of plan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it will not be due today. No. No, we'll make it due in a week or so. Give you guys a week to work on it. A 
we'll just model some sort of object maybe we'll do like a i don't know a knife or a sword or a shield or something i don't know <laughs> ah sports ball <laughs> i get it i get it that's okay unfortunately i am hooked on sports a little bit i love baseball um and football But yeah, I don't know what the object's going to be, but let's throw this assignment in here real quick. So we're going to start a new assignment. We're going to call this simple 3D object speed model. We'll make this do next week. And we'll make it worth 50 points. And now we need to decide what are we going to model today? So let's see here. Two people using RPG Maker. I was thinking, because I was thinking on this on my drive home we either do some sort of like so, like a sword like a samurai sword would be kind of cool because they're not too difficult either we do some sort of samurai sword like this or we do like a shield like a wooden shield. I spelled shield wrong. Don't I have an art degree? <laughs> Something like this might be kind of cool. 50 points. <laughs> um. I don't know if I want to do a football helmet. That might, that's, that's a little tough. I don't want to kill you guys. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to kill you guys. That would be a little rough. A simple object. Sword would be fun. I'm trying to think of like uh, props that you guys will use on your out of class characters. So sword, shield, axes, axes are always fun um maybe like uh a staff or something like a mage staff that could be cool too maybe we'll do that a 3d worm <laughs> we could do like a mage's staff or something that might be kind of cool hard surface Yes, that's that's kind of the idea is do something a little bit hard surface since we're doing more organic stuff for our human models. Uh, no, it will be an assignment. It will be an, a real assignment. The reason I'm doing this is I don't want us to get too far ahead on the human model and to give us a little bit of a break for modeling a human for a week so you guys can catch up on that and do a simple model like this because your hand model if you look at your assignments um let's see here your finalized hand is due when did i have that due in july that's probably going to get bumped to this needs to not be this date this is going to be not the next week, but the following week. So this is going to be due the 22nd. So you'll have the assignment we're talking about today due next week. And then the following week, you'll have your hand that you need to have finished. That makes more sense to me. Three D model of the Maya logo. That'd be kind of cool. 
I'm leaning towards a staff or dude, Gorhal is a cool axe. Can't remember what it looks like. Oh yeah. I don't want to keep this would this would be more than what I want to do today. Simple. Try to keep it simple. I'm thinking like uh something more like this or like this or like this I think a samurai sword would be fun let's see I think we could do a samurai sword pretty easily and keep it simple. Okay. I have decided. We're going to do a samurai sword because I think it will be fun. Okay. For this assignment, you will be rolling a samurai sword. Of your choice so you don't have to model the one i model but it will help you follow along grab a reference so the goal of this assignment everyone is that i want you to do it in an hour okay or maybe a little bit longer than an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and then stop, okay? So this is a speed model. That's why I'm calling it a speed model, right? We're gonna speed model this. So you're just gonna stop. Oh, sorry, yeah. My face is in the middle of the screen. Sorry about that. No. It was in the middle. That's my fault. Cause it was there from when we were doing Photoshop. Okay. So speed model, right? That's the idea with this. So an hour's worth of time, a little bit longer than an hour. Maybe we'll call it an hour and 30 minutes. And then you're going to stop. Okay. Um, if you don't finish it, that's okay. What I want you to do is do get as far as you can in that hour and 30 minutes this is just trying to hone you to get a little bit quicker at your hotkeys and your skills right um i'd like you to grab a reference yes your 3d modeling skills the rules for this exercise. So do not spend longer than 90 minutes on the model. Okay. No texturing. Okay. We are just focusing on our modeling skills. After the 90 minutes, you will stop where you're at and then take uh, three to four screenshots and submit those as well as your uh, Maya file.
Okay. Are we good to model other melee weapons? No, I want you to do a samurai sword. So I'm trying to keep it limited to one thing, right? I want to just gauge kind of where everybody's at with their skills, right? So that's why I'm saying don't spend more than 90 minutes. We're not texturing this, right? And after the 90 minutes, you're going to stop where you're at, okay? Then take three to four screenshots and submit your Maya file, okay? So that's the exercise. So today... I'm going to speed model this in front of you and walk you through all the steps that I'm going to take to get to a finished product. I should be able to finish this in an hour and 30 minutes. In 90 minutes, I should have a complete sword. I'm not saying that all of you should, but um, I want to give you guys the full demo of where we're at, okay? <laughs> a katana lamp. Okay. And when we're done with this, um, I'll take my screenshots of my sword and I'll throw them up in here in the assignment page, okay? So this is gonna be, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, my allergies have been killing me. Okay. So we're gonna have a online submission, file uploads. And I don't want to restrict the file upload. Actually, I don't care. That should be fine. Uh, okay, save and publish. So when we're done with today, I'll post my screenshots and I'll put them in here just to give you guys a little bit of a idea of what's going on. And I'm also gonna show you guys how to pull in a reference image and all that good stuff. So there is some stuff that I do want to go through, some exercises that I do wanna go through that are gonna be beneficial to y'all. Especially when we start modeling our human character we're going to be working from a reference as well. This is why I want you to grab the reference and not just go from something in your brain, say, right? So. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to grab... I'll do a one piece sword or something. Let's see, Zoro. What do his katanas look like? He has this cool one. do his red katana that one's sick okay let's see that super sick red one let's try to find an image of that zora what sword is that red katana that's sick Um, the criteria for the finished hand is um, next week we'll we'll finish up the rest of the hand. We're going to do some uh, retopologization on the top as well as the palm. And then it should just be posed. So your hand will be posed and finished to that point. And that's all you'll submit for this finished hand. Okay. Um, and it should say in the assignment description what that is. But let's see here. Um, I will make this a little bit more descriptive after class today, just to help a little bit. I'll, I'll refine this description just to make sure it's super clear. But yeah, it'll just be the finished hand with all of the retopologization that we do on the top and the bottom, which isn't a crazy amount, but it helps reduce the amount of polygons at the wrist so that when we attach it to an arm, it fits a little bit better. You want to say hi to everybody? You don't? Okay. What's on your nose? What'd you put on your nose? Black what? Okay. Okay.
Okay, one second, okay. All right, so uh, let me try to find a better reference image for this. That one's not bad. This one's not bad. I may need a couple. That's kind of what I need right there, but. Okay. So that's not bad. I do want this image. So I may grab a couple references here just to help me out. That one's not terrible. The reason I'm doing this is I want to try to find one that's uh, a decent enough profile so that we can get the right scaling on it, right? This one seems pretty good. I'm going to use this, I think. Okay. That should be pretty good. Okay. We'll take that. Let's open up Maya. So while Maya's opening and taking a second, um, I need to change a little human's diaper real fast. So I'm gonna take a quick five minute break. So get your reference image download, pick the sword you wanna model, get your Maya opened up, and then I'll be right back, okay? Just give me one second.
Okay, we're back. Hopefully, you guys got your reference image. Hopefully, you guys got your reference image. And um, let's uh, start going, okay? So, first thing you're going to do, okay, is remember that we have our button here that will split into four different orthographic views or sorry three different orthographic views in our perspective view okay so in the front view here in the bottom left if you haven't changed these you are going to grab in the front view there's a button here that says view okay you're going to click that you're going to scroll down to image plane and you're going to hit import image okay And then once that import image uh, has opened up, it will bring you to a file explorer. And then you can grab wherever you saved that image to, right? And this is being really weird. So let's see here. to do that let's see here so I am in my current project that's why it's doing that There we go. So let's open this up. So once you find your picture, you can hit open and that will bring the reference image into your perspective view, okay? So it's under view right here. You make sure you're in your orthographic view. So you're gonna go to view, image plane, import image right here and then click that. And then it will, then you can navigate to wherever you saved your image that you downloaded, okay? Once my Maya decides to respond and not crash here. Okay. So now I've got this image plane in here, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna zoom this up and then I'm going to take uh, this image here and just kind of back it off over here off the grid okay and i am going to use this in a few situations here to help me model uh certain portions of my object okay and since we're speed modeling this i'm just going to kind of go through and build this in pieces and then sort of weld it together for the final piece right so there's a couple places we could start. We could start with the guard. What I want to do is just start with the handle here since it's going to be st pretty straightforward. Um, so what I want to do here is start with a cube. What I want to do with my image plane is kind of put this as dead center as I can in here as far as the guard goes, right? So we'll do something like this. Okay. Okay, so I want to take my object here. I'm gonna uh, expand my front view here. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna grab a cube and I'm just gonna move this up here. 
and I'm gonna turn on what's called X-ray view, which we haven't used a little bit. Um, if you've taken a class from me before, you'll have take you you will have used this mode before, but it's just at the top of your view right here. Um, and you can uh, turn it on by clicking this little button right here that says X-ray. So on the top of your view panel right here, this little button that looks like two little squares kind of overlapping. This is your X-ray view. And you'll see what happens with this is it still kind of leaves the shading of your object on, but it helps it make it a little bit more see-through so you can see what you're doing with your object, okay? And I'm gonna extend this cube out to the length of my guard. And I think this image is just a little bit distorted. I don't think the handle actually curves like this. Most katana, I don't know if katanas do that. Maybe let's take a quick peek here. Most of them are fairly straight. It might have a slight curve to it, but if it does, we'll do it after the fact. We'll curve it after the fact. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is come here, make sure that this handle is kind of matching up to what I think should happen here. And so what I want to do actually here is take my edges or faces along this cube. Yeah, it looks like some of them might curve just a little bit, but we can have that add that curve after the fact. So I'm gonna grab all these faces right here and I'm gonna try something and see if this does what I want it to do. Ooh, it doesn't. So I might do have to do it with the edges instead. Can I go like this? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna do what's a bevel on this here. And this is a new tool, okay? Which I don't think we've used yet. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking all of the edges in the middle of this cube and I'm gonna click on this bevel button over here. What that's gonna do is kind of slice or chamfer off all the corners and create new edge loops based on that, right? All I'm trying to do is round out this handle a little bit, okay? And so, because of that, I am just going to throw in here a couple segments and try to make this as curved as I can. So that seems pretty good right there. But here's the problem, right? And we talked about this before. When I do this, if I don't, um, terminate those edge loops, I have what's a, called a big end gone on the end of my sword here, right? Because this face now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 edges, right? 12 edges. That's an end gone. Okay. So we need to adjust this and terminate all these edge loops to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. Um, if you clicked on it, and it disappeared, you might've hit delete on accident. So you could try to control Z. Um, one way to do that so that you don't mess with that is to put it on a layer. So if you go to your channel layer, channel box layer editor over here, you can click on this button down here under the layers tab that looks like a plane with a circle on it that says create a new layer and assign selected objects. So you can assign your reference image to that. And then you can click the button right here at the far right until it says R. And now it no longer is clickable. Okay, so that won't happen. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna grab my multi-cut tool and I am going to cut an edge loop through the center of this object here. If it will work. Okay, so I'm gonna cut an edge loop through there. I'm just trying to keep uh, my objects consistent. So 
if I wanted to, I could even do this and really split it up. And have a fairly consistent edge loop through there. And then what I could also do is take one through the center of this. So if I did it from a top angle, I could take one through the center here. And the reason I do that is that way, if I needed to, I could split these up into different objects or delete half or delete a quarter of it. But now what I need to do is just terminate these edge loops. So I'm gonna click and just come through here and terminate all these edges. Remember, we just wanna get back to quad polygons. So in this sense, right now, that's back to quad polygons, okay? We fixed that up to a point where we're back to quad polygons. However, these edge loops are a little uneven. So what I'd like to do is you could go from just eyeballing it and just try to make sure that these things look a little bit more even. Or take this one and hold X and make sure it's snapped to the center. That looks a little bit more even now. Okay. And this edge loop looks like it doesn't need to be there. So I'm gonna do shift right click and hold and then just drag over to delete edge right here and let go and that will delete those two edges. The reason why I do that instead of just clicking on the edge in edge mode and hitting delete is when I do that, it's gonna leave behind this hanging vertice and we don't want that either because that will still leave an end gone, right? Because if we're here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six edges, okay? But if you do the first process, which I showed you where you take the edge, hold shift, and then hold right click and drag over to delete edge, it will delete the vertice as well. So you can do that here as well. And then I just need to go about terminating my edge loops. So I'm gonna come here, my multi-cut tool and just click that point and then click this point at the bottom and hit enter. Click that point here, click this point here and hit enter. Click this vertice, click this vertice, hit enter. Click this vertice, click this vertice, hit enter. The reason why I'm hitting enter is that's how you confirm that you want it to cut that edge loop, right? Uh, can Maya freeze objects just like 3ds max? Um, I'm trying to think of what you're asking. There is a way to like freeze an object in space. Yes, you can. Um, if you want to like isolate an object, you can hit control one on your keyboard. So control plus the one key. So that will isolate an object. So if you have a bunch of stuff on your screen, you just want to focus on one spot or one edge loop, you can do that. Or if you want to focus on a whole object, you can do that as well by hitting control one. Control one will unhide everything. Okay. All right, so now I've got my guard kind of, or my uh, grip here worked out a little bit better. What I want to do now is add in some of these edge loops for some of these extra pieces here. So what I'm going to do is grab my edge loops right here. Okay. I'm going to put an edge loop in right here. I'm also going to put an edge loop in where that tip of that uh, kind of end cap sits right there. Okay. Um, and I can go about rounding out the bottom of this object by doing another bevel. So if I go here and go to face mode, highlight over all these faces right here, and then hold shift and unhighlight these faces, right? So I'm just have all these faces selected, right? By doing a marquee select over this, right? I just marqueed over these. 
And then if I hold shift and I try not to touch the ones that are on the end here, and I just marquee through these ones, it should leave these ones selected, right? But I'm holding shift while I'm doing this, okay? So now those should just be selected on the bottom and I can go back to my modeling toolkit and I can hit bevel again on that, okay? And I can take that fraction and make it smaller. What I don't wanna do is make it too crazy, but I can add a segment there. I can do kind of whatever I want with that in a sense. But I'm just trying to round this out just a little bit. So I can take that there. I could then take this edge loop and bring this back a little bit and add my own kind of bevels in here if I wanted to. Right. With like a... Really what needs to happen is I need to do something with this. So let's try that again. Instead of doing the faces, let's do the edge. Let's see if this works a little bit better. I'm just gonna try to do something here by myself. See if I can get this to work a little bit better. Okay, that's fine for right now. I feel like I can do that so much better. Um, we'll come back to that. This is the speed modeling though, so we wanna try to move forward a little bit here. I also feel like I have this 
candle very big, but it's okay. We'll get everything scaled properly once we build the other pieces. Okay. So I'm gonna take this centerpiece here. I'm gonna do an extrusion. Cause again, I'm going from this sort of side view here, right? I'm gonna take an extrude, scale this up, and scale this back. Now I don't think this comes off too far off the sword, but it is kind of a break in between the two guards. So I just wanna separate it a little bit from the rest of the handle. And then it also has these two kind of indents in here. So from the side view, I'm going to take those two little indents and I'm going to take and double click these and do an extrusion here and just scale that in. Do the same thing here, extrusion. just kind of eyeballing that so it'll look something like that and I'm gonna do a mesh display soften edge on here what that's gonna do is try to smooth out everything that's happening in here and then I'll come back and try to do some hardened edges on some of these things Okay. Um, kind of where I know these hard edges are, right? Maybe in here as well as in here. I'm just holding shift to select these edge loops and then I'm double clicking on them. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back here, mesh display, harden edge. All that is saying to Maya is telling it where to apply shading to properly, right? So now we've got kind of a softer edge on some of these things. Um, and then here I'm going to take from this side view, this sort of part of the guard does something like this. All right. And I'm gonna take all these faces here and do an extrude. I'll just pull this back a little bit. Okay. And if I need to, I can kind of adjust the length of this, however this ends up being. Because again, it may end up looking something a little bit more like that where it's a little more square. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna grab these edges around here. And we'll harden these up. And this whole thing might just, it just feels a little wide to me. So let's shrink that down a little. That feels better.
Okay, then I also need to take this piece here. And extrude this. Doesn't need to be crazy, but just enough. Trying to get the guard there. same deal because of the way that I extruded that I'm just gonna soften these edges so go mesh display soften edge and then we'll harden these two edges mesh display harden edge on those. we could also harden this if we wanted to I'll make that feel a little bit better Okay. And then for each kind of diamond piece in this grip, I'm just going to grab something like this in here and throw an edge loop in here like this. And we'll try to do something fairly easy for this. I'm just going to take these edge loops and shift these down. diamond shapes in here. Make sure you're holding shift when you marquee select so that you're getting both sides. And I'm in a marquee or a, just the front view here again. I want to make sure I'm grabbing the backside vertices too. Okay, I just want to double check and make sure that's getting on the other side. It is. It's like this one didn't go well. Okay, let's jump back here. And this isn't the perfect way to do this, but again, Speed modeling, the idea of this is, let's say your producer comes to you, right? Says, hey, we need an asset that's kind of a placeholder for maybe a main object that's going in the game. So your our producer comes up and says, hey, Chase, I need a sword that we can put in the game, at least for right now, that will work as a placeholder until you or another artist finish it, finishes the final asset. So could you make us something so we can get scaling and animations going? 
um and that's kind of your job right you go okay yeah i can do that let me throw something together real fast and so you come in and build out an asset that can be used and just you pump it out quick and it may not be the most beautiful thing you've ever created but they can use it to start moving forward with the design of animations or they need to get scaling built into the engine or something right so that's where this would end up getting used okay what i might do here is it's not the worst thing in the world but i might end up taking this and welding a couple of these together with my target weld to get the right shape for what I'm trying to do on each side here. And I'm not super worried about these triangles, but I want the right shape to be there. to show you my what my thought process was here is I was just going to take some of these like this and I'm marquee selecting these so I can get the backside ones as well and then I'll just check and make sure I've got them selected and I was gonna take this and do an extrusion and just push these in. And then I could come back around here and grab some of these. face instead of just a straight back look How to decrease the number of polygons. Um, there's a few ways you can go about doing that. Um, if you were to delete or combine some of these, right? Like if I wanted to collapse some of these edges just to reduce and make this a little bit smaller, like I could come in here and go like this. and do a shift right click, merge collapse edges, collapse edge. And I could bring all those edges in like this, right? Then I end up with some interesting triangles alongside this object, which for hard surface isn't a terrible thing, right? It's not really distorting my object that much. 
So you could do that and make this a little bit cleaner in this sense, right? And then I think I forgot to weld these back together. So let me do that real quick. So we could do the same thing down here, right? I could take this. Collapse edge, collapse edge. So that cleans that up a little bit. The nice thing I can do too with this now that we've done this, and these aren't all perfectly even and straight, which is okay. They aren't on here either, so. But we have something like this, right? I could take this now and do something like this. Duplicate this, take all the faces from here down, delete, go to face mode, delete, delete, then take all these, delete, take this, delete. I could then take this piece here right come over here and see where this lines up right and then if I just need like one more section there to make this make sense right I could duplicate this or we can come through and do the same process again so there's, there's a couple different ways you could go about doing that. If I was going fast, I'd probably just mirror this and extend it and add a couple more. But just for the sake of showing you all how we did that process one more time, we can go like this again and just go multi-cut, come in here with our multi-cut tool, and then just create these. going to come back through and straighten these out the reasons it's doing that is it's grabbing the edge loop closest to what it looks like closer to that edge so we're just going to grab this just double clicking these and using a scale to scale them back straight And we'll run through that same process one more time, right? Where we're taking our vertices here. I could even do this process where I just shrink it in from both sides.
this last one, I'm just going to bring these two down here. We will go here. something like that and then for here we'll take these and we'll actually push them either I'll take my target weld do a weld here jump back here come down to target weld rotate around target weld target weld and then same deal I'll jump back to my side view here go to face mode just marquee select these extrude jump to this view here and we'll just bring those in okay and then each individual one I can come through with its own scale and try to give it a little bit of a kind of a taper So it has that sort of rounded edge to it on the inside. You could do the same effect with like a bevel, but this works too. our grip for the most part which looks okay I mean, it's not perfect but it's not terrible we could reduce the geometry on that but let's move on to the next part first so let's get this guard in here um, so what I'm gonna do is do the same thing here I'm gonna pull my reference off for my image over here on my channel box I'm gonna turn it off of reference and I'm just going to try to move this guard to the center of the screen because I'm going to try to model this real quick. Okay, so let's jump to the front view. Again, I'm just going to try to move this to the center the best I can. I we'll have to take a little bit of liberty here, but that's okay. So what I want to do is... Um, there's a few ways I could go about doing this. I could build it from what's called a new tool, a new tool that I'll, blah, blah, blah. I could use a new tool that we haven't used. That's called create a polygon, or I could do it from a plane, um, and then just cut out the image with our multi-cut tool, or I could start from a cube and do it that way. I think I'm going to use the create a polygon tool, um, and just build a section of this. So I could build like one quarter of this and then we'll duplicate it around. So let's go about trying to do that. So let's go to um, tools and we're gonna go to create a polygon and I'm gonna start from the center here. And I'm just gonna try to get this as accurate as I can. So I'm gonna go here to here. And then I'm just gonna try to give myself enough geometry around here to create something. Okay. 
and all you're doing with the create a polygon tool is clicking like that to create your polygon you can hit enter and it will create a plane that looks like that object right so i created a plane here if you can see with the create a polygon tool right there's my plane okay um and then what i can do with that is i can add more geometry in there if i want by uh using my multi-cut tool or whatever other uh like your insert edge loop tool but what i want to do is get the geometry lined up so that this kind of makes sense and then once i do that um so what i'll probably do is something like this maybe try to do it in triangles geometry to make that a little bit more round in there and then if I wanted I could do the same thing here come to there go here maybe back to here same thing, I can use that to round this out a little bit more. And then I could take this edge loop and run this through here. Like that. Take this edge loop and run this through here like that. And now I am in quads everywhere, which is good. Okay. So then what I'd like to do is take this object and do a control D and rotate it from the center and hold J and go like this. Or maybe because it's not completely round, I might have to do a little bit of adjusting here. What I can do is go object, mesh tools, I can go mesh mirror like this here and turn my merge threshold down to a 0 0.01 change that to bounding box so this process is a little bit harder but the mirror function is not too bad so you can use poly mirror so there's a couple few, a couple tools you may want to watch this video back and look at a couple of times, um, but I just use the object mirror, right? And then this little window will pop up. Bounding box, all you're doing when you use bounding box is saying, okay, this plane that I've created, um, I just wanna create a box, a virtual box around this, um, and then mirror only based on what's within that box, right? And then the merge threshold is just how far of a diff distance you want all of your vertices to merge at, right? So I just turn it down really far so that it only merges stuff that's really close, right? And so you're not trying to get like these vertices starting to merge towards each other. Okay, then you can hit Q to exit out of that. And then we could do another mirror and go mesh mirror and do it in the Y. Make sure we're in the bounty box, so positive in the Y. 
And then to round this out, we could do something where we do a merge uh, offset. Let's try to bring this a little bit closer to a circle. And then we'll have to do a little bit of cleanup here. We can merge some verts over here to make this look a little bit better, as well as kind of converge all these back to the middle. But that looks a little bit more rounded to me. That looks... Maybe I need to take this over here real quick. Kind of see. Okay. So now that I've got that, I can take all my vertices here in the center and do something like this where I just scale them all to one point and then hit mesh, edit mesh merge so that they're going to one point there. And then where we've got this weird stuff happening here, we can just take our target weld and just weld everything back to the center line. So we, have, we don't have those extra verts happening there. I have one extra one there too, which is fine. And then we could go about re-rounding this up or rounding this off. Again, when we're speed modeling, we're not trying to make it perfect, right? We're just trying to get it as close as we can. Because we could definitely take more time on this to make it absolutely perfect. But the goal, that's not the goal, right? We're just trying to get a model done quickly, right? So we definitely know we could clean this up a lot better. that shape right there is pretty close to what I want it to be. Now what I want to do with this plane is just extrude this whole object. So we're just going to create something like this. All right, so there's our guard. Um, we could take some time and add some more of that detail in there. I just want to try to make sure I get the right scale before I put more detail on this. So let's try to get this lined up with the center of our sword here. So we're gonna center the pivot on this. Get it lined up. Let's get it to the right scale here. Uh, participation, blah, 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 part, yes, attendance answer. Let's see here. Notes. Um, let's do create a polygon. That will be your answer for attendance today. Since we just learned that new tool. OK, 
Okay. Create a polygon. Cool. Again, one more time, the attendance answer for today is create a polygon, okay? All right, so we've got guard kind of pieced out. Um, there is the blade, which I do want to try to get in here. And so what I want to do is just use my reference image based off of what I've modeled so far. So I'm gonna take all this, kind of move this down. I might combine these real fast. Mesh combine, just to scale them down a little bit. Get them kind of moved down. Um, and then I'm gonna move this into position to try to make the blade work properly, right? So we'll just rotate our image until it kind of makes sense, right? It's not gonna be perfect, but just to give us a little bit of scale on the blade, right? And we have to remember that this is kind of rotated, but I think that looks pretty good. Like if we were to take our guard and rotate this to where it lines up with the image, right? We're doing okay. This blade might actually be a little bit longer, but We could do something like this to try to make it look a little bit more like it. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a cube. And I'm going to use a cube for the blade here. So what I'm going to do is grab a vertice and I'm just going to extend it out to the length of that sword. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is take these two verts and snap them. Maybe not snap them, but do something like this. I'll take this vert and kind of bring it to where the tip of the blade is. And then I'll bring this one here to kind of where that curve starts. And then I can start adding in uh, edge loops, right? In here and trying to start helping this make a little bit more sense. So I just start grabbing some edge loops, grabbing my vertices, kind of pulling some of these down. Again, we're just trying to get the blade shape a little bit to make sense. can come in here take this object really shrink this up all right and already at this point we're really starting to get something that feels more like a sword right so we just need to match some of these vertices up with the curvature a little bit better. And I'm gonna cut an edge loop like that down the center. Something like this. Start cutting some more in here.
There is another way that we can go about doing this, and I'll show you guys in just a second. And you can kind of decide which one you like better, okay? So we're, we have this method that I've already kind of done, right? Help us get a little bit more of a curve going. Okay, so that's starting to get more and more curved, right? There is a little bit other method that we could use here. So what we could do, if you wanted to try this one too, is from the side view, we could do our same cube method, right? Where we start with a cube, take the whole length of the blade like this, right? And then what I can do is go to my uh, divisions, right? And I don't know if I want to do it that way. Maybe what we'll do is go to channel box editor or attribute editor and we'll add in the height. Nope. In the width, we'll add some subdivisions. I guess it doesn't want to let us do that. That's okay. We can go to the length of the sword. We can do another tool called uh, the insert edge loop tool, which we talked about in the first stream when we were working on the finger. So insert edge loop is very similar to your multi-cut tool. If you click this little box on the side, right? So if you go to, sorry, my Maya is gonna be slow now. If you go to mesh tools, insert edge loop tool. There's a little box right here. This is the settings for the edge loop settings for the insert edge loop tool, okay? So if you click this, it'll pull up the tool settings and you can manipulate how the edge loop tool works. Okay. So you can go to number of edge loops. So I'm going to do, let's do nine or something like this. Okay. And we can do multiple edge loops. You can click these other buttons here, right? Relative distance, equal distance. But I want to use the one that says multiple edge loops. So what it's going to do is space them out for me. And then if I click on this object, you'll see that it just dropped in nine edge loops for me. Okay. Then what I can do is take this object, right? Um, in vertex mode. For some reason that's not working properly. Okay. I can hit soft select, right? Which is the B key. And then I can turn up the soft select really high right by holding B and dragging right and then I could do something like this to curve that right or I could do a rotate from here or I could go from the bottom like this and do a rotate to try to get that blade curve so there's a couple different ways you could go about curving that sword however you think will work the best for what you're trying to do right So we could have done something like that in order to get the curve for our sword, right? So there's a couple different ways you can go about doing that, right? I'm gonna stick with this method that I've done right now because I've already committed time to it. But if you wanted to, you could go ahead and adjust or do whatever you want to make that work a little bit better, right? I need to turn off soft select with the B key.
So from here, to get the shape on the blade that I want on the bottom, I am going to run an edge loop through the center of my blade right here, okay? And then on the bottom side here, I'm going to take my target weld tool and all the way up until the point where I have the little piece that wraps around the edge here, I'm just going to weld these together, okay? So I might need to add another edge loop right here for that. And then I'll take my target weld and go like this. And this is how I'm going to make my sharp edge of my katana. I can also take my time and do my bevel on this piece here where I have that same sort of rounded edge that we had on the guard, right? So I could bevel those. I could also take these and kind of blow them up a little bit. take a look at how this is lining up and if I need to I could even take a look at like welding some of these edges if necessary This is an end gone, however, right? One, two, three, four, five. So if I were to do something like this and weld those like that, could do something like that. And then to make this work properly, that's a one, two, three, four. Oh, that should be fine, actually. I just need to take all of this here and go mesh display, harden edge. And then I can take these ones here and soften these. I could even take this edge here, soften all these all the way around. Give it the look that I want there. And then I don't want these edges to be hard, but I do want that kind of line to run through the katana. So we'll soften those. Okay. So the next step, okay. I'm kind of wrapped up 
uh hotkey for softening edges is i don't know if there is one i just do under under mesh display soften edge i just leave it under the mesh display tab right here right so mesh display harden edge or soften edge um the last little piece i don't want to go over the hour and a half mark so i'm almost done but if i wanted to i could add some of the detail that's on this guard right kind of has that edge that wraps all the way around um So if I wanted to, I could do something like this. I'm trying to make this look more like the sword. I'm just doing that with multi-cut. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could cut through the center of this. And then that way I don't have to, I can just delete half of this real fast. So I can go object mode, mesh, separate, go to face mode, just grab this side of this guard, delete this since I just cut in those extra faces over here already. Then I could take this and go something like this. You can paint select by holding tab. So if you hold tab, you can just keep paint selecting. Make sure you're not selecting stuff you don't want. Then I could hit extrude on this. Pull this forward. Kind of create that look to the guard there. I can take this then and go mesh mirror like we did before. Again, it's gonna, it may look weird, but as soon as I hit bounding box on this and do a negative X, is it negative X? Positive X, negative. 0 0.01. That's better. Is it positive X? No. Let's see here. Offset. Yeah, you could just keep extruding from the handle. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's there's no real downside to that. If you wanted to do it like that, it's fine. Um, 
Yeah, I don't see an issue. I just did them as three objects because I was, you know, going fast. And in hard surface, it's not really a huge issue to do that, right? Um, I got these lined up. Let's just go to a side view here. I'm going to turn off the guide now and turn back on my normal mode. Just to make sure things are lining up here. I can turn on this. Try to make sure everything's lining up. Modify center pivot on this. And I know there's another piece to this guard center, but I don't want to take too much more time, right? I just wanted to be realistic about what I could do in that hour and kind of hour and 30 minute mark if you take out questions that I answered and things, right? So this is a pretty good speed, speed model, right? We've got, you know, maybe another handle. I think there's a little hook or loop piece that goes over the bottom of the guard and maybe some more detailing in the guard piece here as well as I want to do something like this where I soften the edges and then only make the edges that are hard, hard here. Let's do that as the last step. getting this edges selected that I wanted to be hard edges, right? Oops. Kind of the rule of thumb for hard edges too is to think about everywhere where there's a 90 degree angle change and that will help you figure out where you need your hard edges on objects. Sometimes that can be a 45, but most of the time it's gonna be that 90 degree angle change. to go mesh display harden edge I should have hardened up all this stuff made it look a lot nicer okay cool so I'm gonna stop here
Oh, good question, Austin. Is that a personal preference thing or or is one better than the other? Um, I think it depends on the object you're building. So if it makes sense for you to just extrude it out of it, yeah, go for it, right? Like down here, it didn't make sense for me to not extrude things out of here, right? So that's why I kind of went about it the way that I did, right? But in other senses, right, it made sense to do it, you know, uh, the more traditional way. So it just depends on the object you're building, right? Like, for example, this piece down here, this cap and this kind of in-between guard or handle here, right? I just extruded those out of the original out of the original mesh, right? So it made sense to do it that way. Where with some of the other stuff I was building, I went about it, you know, by just kind of piecing it together. I think it would have done a better job if you had a reference. Yeah, referencing is definitely the way to go, right? So here is our samurai sword. I just mesh combined those. You can take a look at it. In proper, proper Zoro fashion, we can give him Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry. My allergies are just killing me. So what I'd like you to do, right? Take that hour and 30 minutes. You can cheat a little bit if you want, right? Because you've been watching the stream. But start a timer, right? Or even if you want to start over, that's fine too. Start yourself a timer. And after the 90 minutes, just go ahead and stop, right? Like I know there's more I could do here, but I'm just going to stop for right now, okay? And then for your object, what I want you to do is just take a couple screenshots. So give me a few screenshots around your model. You could even turn on your wireframe if you want to have it look something like this so I can see what's going on, right? And then that's what you'll hand in for your assignment and then turn in your mod, your uh, Maya file too. Okay. So you don't, I don't even know if you'll get to this point in the 90 minutes. You may not. Maybe you just get the guard, the handle and the, this piece done, or maybe you just get the handle done, but that's, that's the point of the assignment. I'm not going to dock points if you didn't finish the object, right? Um, what I will dock points for is if you just turn in like a cube. It's like, I know you can do more than a cube in 90 minutes, right? Most of you, hopefully in 90 minutes should be able to get even a block out done. Like, let's say you don't even start getting a lot of this detailing done. Like if I were you guys and I was gonna, and if I wasn't super comfortable in doing this high level of detail, like right off the bat, I would go about building just the block out. So go, handle guard blade and get it blocked out and then start refining the details on each piece right so you at least have a full sword and then you can kind of work from there right so think about that as you're working through um but yeah it says in the details of the assignment right if you don't finish it's not the end of the world but what i want you to do is do your best to um, you know, get something completed, right? But just stop after those 90 minutes, okay? So, uh, with that being said, if there's no questions, I'll leave you guys to go. Um, we'll end class a little bit early today. It's what five, we were supposed to go to 530, but we'll call it here. Let you guys take some time to do your speed model, right? 
Um, the reason, again, we're going about doing this is just to give us a little bit of a break from the human model as well as some experience and maybe some hard surface if you wanted to do some accessories on your outside of class model, right? Maybe this sword that you build right now could even be a part of your out of class model. Or maybe you build part of it and then it you're like, okay, well, now I've built part of a sword. I could use that for my out of class model and there's an accessory that I've built, right? Awesome. That's what I love to hear. That's the point. These speed models are an exercise, right? And we may do a couple more throughout the semester. If we have time, if we get a little bit ahead, maybe we'll do another object or something. Okay. My goal as your teacher in the 3D modeling world is to expose you to as much modeling as possible, right? So I know that the human model is really good for you guys. But if I can throw a couple more objects at you during the semester, just say, hey, maybe this is a different way or a different problem we can solve today um and we have time to do it i'm gonna try to do that okay that's my goal as as your mentor in the 3d modeling space i want to try to throw as many objects at you as possible um the way that the curriculum is set up is not kind of friendly to that but i'm going to do my best to work them in if i can okay so with that being said Thanks everybody. Uh, great questions today. Um, I'm glad you all showed up and stuck through for most of the most of the stream. If you want to come back, cut back and watch through anything that I did, um, I tried my best to walk through and tell you everything that I was doing. Right? If there's a key or a command that you missed, scrub back through the video. Um, especially on that mirror command. Maybe you might want to watch that back a couple of times just to w step through how that mirror command functions. If you haven't done it before, it can be a little wonky. Um, but extrude and everything else we kind of already have worked on. So hopefully I didn't go through too many crazy tools. I know we talked about beveling, um, but bevel isn't a too difficult of a tool either. Um, we did do some uh, geometry reduction in some spots, right? So. You may want to take a look at that as well. But like I said, nothing too insane. Um, yeah. Thanks again. Uh, and if you have any questions in the meantime, in the week ahead, um, make sure you're trying to catch up on your hand model. Um, and then make sure you're doing this as well. Okay. Again, this is an assignment. This is not an assignment that's meant to stress you out or kill you, right? It's just an exercise. So again, use it to strengthen and work out those 3D modeling muscles. If you don't finish the sword all the way, don't stress, right? Just get to where you get in those 90 minutes. Give your block out 90 minutes for yourself and say, hey, in this hour and a half, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to build a whole sword, right? Um, the attendance question, if you missed it, I gave it out earlier, but the answer is create a polygon, okay? Since that was one of the new tools we learned today. create a polygon okay all right everybody thanks for a great stream um i'm having a ton of fun with the semester so far this is my this is my passion right i love 3d modeling it's a ton of fun um so uh yeah keep working at it if you're struggling i promise it'll get easier the more you practice so that's why we have these exercises right um and I will see you all next week, okay? Thanks, everybody. Uh, if you got problems, hit me up in the Discord. Um, hit up your TAs. And I will see you all next week, okay? Be safe. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you later.